Hello and welcome back to another video. So this video is going to be all about me rescaping my six foot tank behind me. Now for those that don't watch my videos or you're new to the channel, I keep Mbuna, which is obviously an African cichlid fish. Uh, Mbuna sort of require a rocky environment. Um, so the rocks that are in my tank are what's called sandstone. Um, I got them from my brother-in-law who was knocking down an old weathered mason wall so I've got roughly around about between 120 maybe 140 kilos worth of sandstone in this tank behind me. So the process of uh, me hardscaping a new tank I, I do it not that often um, because I like the fish when they get all settled but that's a different story. So for the purpose of this video I, I'm going to break everything down into segments uh, in regards to me taking everything out of the tank uh, and putting it back into the tank. Now these um, rocks are quite large, well most of them are, especially the, the, like the three in the, in the middle here, um, they're very very heavy so it's going to be quite a challenge for myself just to get them out because I'll be hanging over the tank but, but anyway. So my goal at the end of the video is just to give you guys an idea of what I go through when I do a rescape. Um, it might not be for everyone, uh, I try and replicate the lake as much as possible but like I said not everyone has got sort of access to these type of stones or anything that looks very similar to the to the rocks uh, and boulders that are in the actual lake. Um, so it's going to take quite a long process, I'm going to try and keep the video quite short, you might not see all the process uh, in regards to me siphoning out the waste that's going to be collecting underneath the rocks um, for quite some time but I do siphon every time I do a water change. Uh, my plan is to lower the tank down a little tiny bit, um, obviously keep the, the filters running uh, and I might just turn the heaters off as well which is a good idea just in case I drop the water below the actual heater level so I don't want to pop them basically when they get too hot. So I've sort of got an idea uh, what I want to do with the actual hardscape of the tank but it might change along the process of the video. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video guys, sit back and always leave a comment if you've got any suggestions or any questions and stuff like that, I do try and answer everyone. But anyway, enjoy the video. Okay, so I've reduced uh, the water level ever so slightly. What I need to do um, now is obviously try and remove all the rocks without any problem. It's a bit of a, I would say, <laughs> it's like a jigsaw in there. Uh, the problem is at the moment now that the, the filter is hitting the side I've reduced the flow on, on both of them. What it's doing it's kicking up all the fine bits of the, the gravel and stuff like that and once I start moving the, the rocks it's going to irritate the gills of the fish uh, and you'll see them just now and then uh, flash on the rocks just to release it. You can see uh, there's a few bit of aggression and stuff going on as well. Everything's a big water change, it normally happens when I do a water change they all get ready for it. As soon as that new water goes in, they all start breeding like mad. And my other concerns with um, doing a big rescape like this, there's loads of fry hit, hiding in amongst all the rocks, so I might lose might lose some, but if I can, I'll probably try and net as many as I can. Um, but unfortunately, in, in a big tank like this, it, it, it's pretty hard to be able to remove the rocks and catch the fry pretty much at the same time. It's, it's almost impossible. So the next step is get all the rock out, bit like Jenga, I'll probably work this area first and then move a bit more down here and then I'm just going to put all the rocks um, basically in front of the tank down leaving me a gap to put them back in, okay? Okay, so this sort of area now is removed. Um, you saw me moving the, the big the big rock, I'll just show you. I can get it down. That was quite heavy to move, but other than that, it's gonna be okay for the rest of them. What I'm probably gonna do is just move these really big rocks uh, just around the tank, just to make it a bit more easier on myself. Uh, I've got an idea whereabouts they're going to go, so if I'm just gently move them over uh, and get them placed down, it should be fine. Um, you can see there is, looks like there's some gaps where there's no sand, it's just from these guys moving it around constantly, 
so it, they seem to all congregate and move it all down to to uh, down this end it's a lot higher down here so still got a few more to move uh, you'll probably notice the water will get a bit more murky now because obviously the flow is kicking up most of the little bit of debris that was underneath the rocks on this side uh, but hopefully once I take the rest of these rocks out the displacement will sort of drop the tank down as much as I need to be able to do a nice 50% water change uh, and then add in some you know sickle late salts just back into the tank uh, and then we should be good to go so on to the next stage So every time I do a rescape, this is the tricky bit. And I've taken out most of the rocks from the tank. Uh, I'm trying to decide how to make it look as natural as possible and not man-made. I know it is obviously man-made because we are placing the rocks and stuff. But if you look at nature, sometimes it doesn't look, um, you know, uniform. Some cases it does, uh, but most of the time it sort of works in threes. You'll have too large and a small, or too small and a large. It's really hard to sort beside so what I'm thinking of probably doing is having a larger rock shovel towards this end down here uh, which will be obviously in the corner uh, another larger one just off it and then sort of a, a rocky bottom here with a larger rock coming up maybe this end still giving them a, a full area of, of rock to sort of cover or I could possibly split it again like I have done previously as two main sort of outcrops one over here and, and one down on this end here but it's the bit that takes me the longest time is deciding uh, what to go for okay so I sort of made up my mind I'm going to go with it uh, I like the look of this uh, little rock pile here uh, this big rock's given the tank or height and that one there that's really the only way I can sort of place this rock into the tank because of um, the shape of it. So what I'm possibly do is move this one down possibly nearly all the way to the end uh, and then I'm going to have more of a, a larger one here, the, the big rock that I've taken out already and then down towards this end I'm going to try and build it maybe slopey uh, and then maybe a larger one towards the end. Okay so here's another tip um, you don't have to always place the rocks onto the uh, onto the glass. You can use other sort of rocks as well to use them as props. You can use them to increase the height. Uh, as you can see underneath here, this big rock, sorry about the glare, um, this big guy here that's now sticking out of the water, I want it to sit more upright uh, before it was coming across more here. So it's steaming up, I can't, you can't really tell. Um, but now, they look a bit better in my opinion. What I'm going to use, I'm going to use smaller rocks as a foreground rock and what it does, it hides the way the rocks are placed behind. So you won't even see that that rock there is resting on another rock. When you do this, try and nudge it, move it all different ways. This will make um, make you sort of a bit of peace of mind, I guess, uh, that this rock is not going to come toppling down uh, in a week's time. So. I've got this piece in now, obviously I'm going to probably tweak it, move it round and stuff. Because uh, it's been in the tank for so long and that bottom bit, as you can see, this side um, had no light on top of it, so it's a bit of a lighter colour. So I don't know which way I'm going to turn it yet, but as you can see the Hongai are trying to breed and all sorts already. Um, most of Mbuna are all congregating around this pile of rocks uh, and then obviously this side is going to be more built up. I'm going to come down with the with the rocks sort of in this little bit here. Come down, just build it up around this bit here. So I'm, I'm kind of liking it. But right, I've worked this area a bit more. Just trying to slot these rocks in so they look like they're naturally coming out of the uh, off the larger ball of them. I'm just going to work this area here. I have got a bit of gap in the foreground to work with as well. Uh, that's coming on nicely. I've got around about five pieces of rock left so all in all I'm pretty happy the stage that I'm at now 
I've got all the rocks in, fed them all in so they sort of all blend together. Um, I'm really happy with that. At this end is really nicely built up, plenty of areas for them to get in and out there. It's a bit more built up on this side than it is over here, but I, I want to keep this area just a tiny bit open and see if I can en encourage uh, some of my other guys to breed down there. Maybe more the Seleucii, as you can see there, the one guy is already trying to show off. So all I have to do now, drain it down some more, siphon off some more waste that's collecting into the corners, uh, fill it back up, add my salts, add my uh, dechlorinator, and away you go. Hopefully in a few hours time it'll clean up night nice, uh, and really sparkling water so I'll be able to get a better footage showing you guys the final scape. Okay everyone, it's been a couple of hours since I refilled the tank and it's settled down quite a bit now. It's not as cloudy and as murky as it was before, but it's still got a ways to go. I wanted to get this video done in one go, get it uploaded for you guys. Uh, so yeah, I think you can see pretty much what I was going for when I was talking about the the two larger rocks on um, this side here and then the large one here all built up. So there's a nice big area still in here. It looks like they're enjoying it, they're just investigating everywhere, pretty mellow at the moment, just relaxed. Checking everything out. No aggression. Yeah, quite happy with it. You can see though that side of the rocks. It's a good tip as well, when you've actually put all the the rocks into place that you really like and you're not going to move them again push up the substrate right up to the rocks and it makes the rocks look like they're, they've been there for a very long time and not just placed there as you can see I pushed all the sand up and going over to that side as well and that's the opposite side So all in all, I think it's a it's a nice balanced hardscape. I mean, I've I've done quite a lot now on this big tank. Um, I haven't got a favourite. Every time I, I do a new one, it's just because I you know I do, I just want to change things around, um, and it, it keeps me busy and it keeps the fish sort of active. They'll now make new territories and stuff like that, so I just have to monitor it for a couple of days. So yeah, I uh, hope you all enjoyed the video. And like I said, halfway through the video, if you've got uh, any suggestions, any questions, please leave a comment. Um, check the description, find me on Facebook and Twitter, and all those social media things. So yeah guys, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.